Hi, everyone. I'm your host, Zoltan Diak, and thanks for joining us. Now, every organization out there deals with web-based attacks regularly and has been for decades. And yet, phishing is still the action that most often leads to breaches. Fileless attacks are rapidly increasing in volume and effectiveness. Today, we'll be joined by our resident expert on web security and how those threats have been evolving. So say hi to Palo Alto Networks engineer, Almas Raza. Thanks, Alton. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Fantastic. And Almas, I know you love to travel. And unfortunately, most of us haven't been able to travel much in the past year. I know you've got the bug. Uh, where is the next place you want to go when you have a chance? Uh, in fact, I am planning to go to Greece now since they're saying it, everybody who's vaccinated can travel. So I do want to go to Greece, that's for sure. It's been too long to not travel. Uh, I'm jealous. Um, have you been uh, researching those trips on the web? I am. In fact, you know, because of all of these COVID restrictions and everything, you have to look into the map to figure out what is going on. So for sure, I am. Have you seen any suspicious sites while you're in the course of your research? And you know, that's an interesting question, Zoltan, because believe it or not, I think it's just getting so more obvious that when you search something, like I was searching to find out where we're gonna stay or something, and you can see a lot of phishing sites are popping up because they say, oh, you, you know, you win this or you, you know, won this, something like that. So yeah, it's getting very common, I think. Well, that makes a, an interesting segue for us then. Um, so you know, I mentioned web-based threats earlier. So, and just to level set, can you define or give us examples of the types of threats we're really talking about here? So, yeah. So as we said, Greg, every day we expend enormous amount of time on web, either by, you know, conducting business, searching for some information, or just simply browsing the internet like I do. So the problem what we're seeing is web is becoming such a common place that most of the people forget how dangerous the internet can be. So what we have seen is, um, and then other, another thing I have noticed that most of the user don't know that a lot of attackers are using web as the most, uh, most attack launching interfaces, for example, right? So a lot of attacks are getting launched through the web. In fact, based on our latest stats, 84% increase in the malicious website by itself, volume has increased just in this last one year. So you can see the pattern. And of course, this malicious website contain all kinds of threats, right? malware, phishing, command and control, graveyard, you name it. So basically the point I'm trying to say here, the user needs to be very concerned or they need to be at least careful when they go to the web because web is definitely not as safe as they might think. Right, and you know, we've been dealing with these types of threats for years, right? So how come organizations out there are still getting breached and they're getting data stolen or, or infected by malware? Why are we still vulnerable to this? That's an interesting question also, because absolutely attacks are there for a long time. So does the solution. There are tons of security solutions that are available, but here we are again seeing the, you know, the breaches and then we are seeing all these different type of attacks. The security solutions are not able to protect. I would say there are multiple reasons, but let's focus on top three, correct? First, traffic being encrypted. So what we have noticed is most of the web traffic is encrypted these days. In fact, 95% of the web traffic is encrypted. So what encryption does, it creates their blind spot for most of the security solutions. Uh, so it doesn't matter from the user point of view of how comprehensive your security solution is, because if you cannot see the threat inside, how are you gonna protect it, correct? So the next point I wanted to talk about it is we are seeing this different trend of evasion techniques. So what we have seen lately, the attackers, adversaries or attackers are using all of these different evasion techniques so they can hide themselves from the security vendors, correct? Everybody knows there are millions and millions of URLs comes up every day. So there is no way the security vendors are using human to analyze them. So everybody knows they're using some kind of automated crawler or a scanner to analyze them. And of course, the attacker knows that too. So what they're doing is now they're using all of these different evasion techniques to hide themselves. For example, cloaking, fingerprinting, capture protection is another one we have noticed, um, one-time link. So they're using all of these different techniques to hide themselves. 
The last or the last but not least, the point I want to talk about is, is the problem with the existing security solution. So most of the existing security solution are rely on database. So the, if you look at the database, they are great for policy enforcement where you can force the user just to go to the business appropriate sites, not to go to those, you know, adult site or Netflix or something. And they also were great to protect the user from this malicious based attack, right? Malicious, known malicious website. But the problem is they are insufficient to protect the user from these latest fast paced, short lived attacks, right? For example, phishing. Think about a phishing site. The life span of a phishing site is so small that by the time we as a vendor analyze them, categorize them, add them into the database, the attackers already move to a different URL or different domain. And, and the reason is because URL and domains are not that expensive anymore, correct? So basically having a solution rely only on the database is definitely not helping much either. So on this, let's zero in a, a little bit on one of the things that you pointed out, which was some of the evasions. That seemed really interesting to me. And you use terms like cloaking and CAPTCHA. Uh, can you elaborate on some of those um, different types of evasions for us? Um, that, that seems really interesting to go into. So evasion is definitely something latest trend we are seeing from last few years, correct? So, um, and of course, cloaking being the most famous or um, the most common one we are seeing. So what they do is now the attackers are using cloaking to, to hide themselves, right? So first, let's understand what cloaking is really, correct? Cloaking simply means, essentially means you're showing a totally different content to a user versus what you would show to the crawlers or scanners. So now, of course, it comes to the same point that how do they do that? So the way they do it, when they build this malicious website, they have they add some kind of mechanism where the site by itself is looking for some information from the user. So for use, for example, user like you and me will go to the site, they have some mechanism built in to either search for our browser uh, type, browser family. Um, the another example would be the mobile, right? The page are designed to show content only to the mobile devices. So what happens is when the mobile device, mobile devices go and to the site or visit the site, they will see the real malicious content. People like you and me from the desktop browser will go, we either will not show anything at all to us, right? So empty pages, or we'll show a completely benign looking content. And sometimes we have seen that they will even redirect to another completely benign looking website. So this is how they hide themselves. So the another trend we are seeing is the one you ask about is the CAPTCHA protection. CAPTCHA protection is another simple evasion technique where you go to a site, is a very simple benign looking site with a CAPTCHA on it. The only way you would see the real content if you entered, if you pass the CAPTCHA. So basically they are successfully hiding the content from a non-human visitors. So from a customer standpoint, what should they be looking for in a modern defense system? Um, what are some of the things that they can look for in security vendors to help them address these new types of threats? To be honest, as a user um, or even as a vendor, there are a lot of things needs to be changed for us to be completely protected from this sophisticated modern days web-based threat, the one kind of a trend we talked about it, correct? Um, I think if first thing the user needs to look is the solution speed, correct? These existing security solutions are too slow to fight against these, uh, these fast-paced uh, modern day threats. So when it, just look at this, right? When attackers are launching this short-lived, fast-paced attack, and with all of these different evasion techniques around us, we need a different approach. Some basically, this database solution simply is not going to be able to help us solve all the problem. So basically, I think I would say, if you really need to think about it, look at those solution we have it for file-based protection, correct? We already using a machine learning real-time detection approach for all of those never seen or unknown files, right? And in fact, we have a kind of similar approach for DNS basis uh, stuff also. So we really need to have similar solution for web-based unknown, never seen attacks. The second thing I would say is to basically the vendors needs to provide, and that goes to vendor, right? The vendor needs to provide an easily deployable SSL decryption solution. The majority of the problem we are seeing because the URLs are not getting decrypted. And the reason is not getting de decrypted because to be honest, users don't know how to do it. The current SSL decryption solution is so complicated that most of the user are scared to deploy it without stepping into some kind of regulation. 
So we as a vendor, or the, they need to provide a very simple solution. And I'm just gonna use a simple example, right? Don't categorize a URL just based on the content. Categorize it based on the risk level. Correct. So, for example, if you categorize every URL to have a risk level of low, medium, or high, it's so easy for me being a user to understand what to do, what not to do, correct? So I can easily say all of my high risk URL, I'll just block it. All of the medium risk, I'll do the SSL decryption. So we don't need to have user go read every content. Think about it, correct? Majority of the vendor has 70 plus different categories. How the user would know what to decrypt, what not to decrypt. So that would be another suggestions I have for users. All right. Well, thank you, Almas, for sharing your expertise with us here today. And folks, uh, if you enjoy this show, please like, subscribe, comment, and visit paloaltonetworks.com. See you in the next episode.